Good morning, boys and girls. I'm Eleanor Hawkins, and welcome to Tell a Story Time. A library, a magic castle. Come to the magic castle when you are growing tall. Rows upon rows of word windows line every single wall. They reach up high, as high as the sky, and you want to open them all. For every time you open one, a new adventure has begun. The library, a magic castle. And boys and girls, our very first story this morning is entitled, The Little Mailman of Bayberry Lane. Oh, it was a lovely clear autumn morning in Bayberry Lane. The trees were bright yellow and red. The thistles were sparkling with dew. And there was that good bayberry smell coming from the bushes on either side of the lane. Even though it was very early, Mrs. Goose had wandered far up the lane, picking bayberries. She was going to make bayberry candles that day. Besides, she always liked to be the first to welcome the little mailman, for he always had the latest gossip, and she peered up the lane to see if he was in sight. <coughs> Mrs. Duck was sweeping the yellow leaves off her walk. She too kept going out to her mailbox and looking up the lane. Oh, I do hope there's a letter for my sister, she thought. And Mr. Turtle was sitting on his front step in the warm sunshine. His eyes were closed, but he wasn't asleep. He was listening for the cheery whistle of the little mailman. I wonder if he'll bring me my two-lip collar log, he thought. But he didn't go out to the gate and look up the lane. Shucks, he said. What's the hurry anyhow? <clears throat> Around the bend in the lane was Mrs. Pig's house. Mrs. Pig was waiting by her mailbox, even though she never received any letters. Every morning she hoped for one, but every morning the little mailman passed her by. Then from up the lane came the little mailman's chatter. Oh, Mrs. Goose, you're out early this morning. Here is your mail. Have you heard that the robins are going south for the winter? And Mrs. Duck, a yellow letter for you today. Yellow means good news, you know. And then he put a tulip catalog into Mr. Turtle's mailbox and called, Hi, Mr. Tur Turtle. Here are tulips if you don't, and here are tulips for you that won't talk back. And then he laughed. And as quickly as he had come, he was around the bend in the lane. There he slowed down to a walk, and his cheerfulness seemed to leave him. He didn't like to go by Mrs. Pig's house. He couldn't bear to look at her disappointment on her face every morning. The little mailman was the only one who guessed how sad and lonely Mrs. Pig was. And there she was standing by her mailbox, waiting for him. The little mailman put on a bright smile and called, Good morning, Mrs. Pig. Say, do you, do I smell apple tarts this morning? I have one here for you. Today's my baking day, you know. He, pit, he bit into the tart. Mmm, Mrs. Pig, you're the very best cook of Bayberry Lane. Mrs. Pig blushed and looked very pleased. And then with a cheery thank you, the little mailman bounded off down the lane. <clears throat> he thought, I wonder why Mrs. Pig never gets any letters. Well, maybe it's because she never writes any herself. I wonder why she doesn't have any friends. Maybe it's because she never goes out anywhere to make friends. Maybe she's shy and afraid to try. Somebody ought to get her started. I wish I could think of some way to help her. And he was munching the apple tart. Mm-hmm, today is Friday. I wonder what she'll bake next Friday. Then he had a wonderful idea. Oh, wonderful, he shouted. And he couldn't wait to get home to start working on it. Now the little mailman's house was under a stone wall. Oh, it was always so dark in his rooms, even in the middle of the day. He lighted one of Mrs. Goose's bayberry candles and sat down at his table 
to write. He wrote, you are invited to a surprise party for Mrs. Pig next Friday afternoon at 3. And then he popped the invitation to, into a pink envelope for Mr. and Mrs. Goose. Then another one for the ducks and one for Mr. Turtle. The next morning after the little mailman had passed through Bayberry Lane, all was excitement. Everyone but Mrs. Pig had received a pink invitation. There hasn't been a party in the lane for a long time. Mrs. Goose was ironing her party sash. Mrs. Duck was sticking new feathers in her party hat. And Mr. Turtle was shaking mothballs out of the pockets of his party jacket. But Mrs. Pig was still sad and lonesome as she went about her housework. On Friday, she did all her baking as usual. And this time she made apple tarts and little lemon cakes, all covered with hickory nuts. She set them on the windowsill to cool and went out to work in her garden. Now at three o'clock, she was just picking a bouquet of chrysanthemums when she heard, surprise, surprise, and up popped six heads from her garden wall. She dropped the flowers and dropped the scissors and stood there with her mouth wide open. Well, she could hardly believe her eyes. Then she remembered her manners and she said, oh, do come in, won't you? They all scrambled over the stone wall, all except Mr. Turtle, who went around and through the gate. Mrs. Goose said, I brought you some of my handmade bear bear bayberry candles. They smell so good when they're burning. And Mrs. Duck said, I brought you a feather duster I made myself. The little mailman had brought her a basket of hickory nuts. And just then, Mr. Turtle arrived and presented her with his best tulip bulbs. Oh, it was the happiest afternoon of Mrs. Pig's life. And everyone had a wonderful time at the party. They played croquet on the lawn and Mrs. Pig brewed a big pot of tea and served her apple tarts and her lemon cakes. The party didn't end until dark. Now, the following day, the milkman chattered with everyone as usual all down Bayberry Lane. And as he came to Mrs. Pig's house, he whistled a merry little tune. For in his mailbag were six little letters for Mrs. Pig. Mrs. Pig was so excited that she read them right where she stood. The first one said, Dear Mrs. Pig, thank you for the lovely time we had at your house yesterday. Won't you have dinner with us on Sunday? Sincerely, Mrs. Goose. The next one said, Dear Mrs. Pig, thank you for making the party so enjoyable. And thank you especially for the lemon cakes. If you will come over this afternoon, I'll show you how to plant your tulip bulbs, your friend, Mr. Turtle. And the rest were all thank you letters too. Mrs. Pig was never sad and lonely after that. There were so many visits to be made, so many parties, and so many letters to be answered. And Mrs. Pig knew that she owed all her newfound happiness to her very best friend the little mailman of Bayberry Lane. And that is the story of Little Mailman of Bayberry Lane. Boys and girls, stay tuned, and we'll be back in just a moment to read from our big Do You Know book. Please stay tuned. And now, boys and girls, I'm going to read from my big Do You Know book. Do you know all about beautiful fall leaves? Do you know in the fall, leaves slow down? Their green color is called chlorophyll, and it gradually disappears, and then their beautiful colors appear. 
Do you know people used to say Jack Frost painted the autumn leaves? It wasn't accurate because the leaves often turn before the first frost comes. Do you know about the painted leaves of fall? The birch leaves turn yellow. The maple leaves are flaming orange and red. The hickory and ginkgo leaves turn gold. And the leaves of the oaks turn scarlet. You know, enjoy the beautiful color leaves that are falling right now. You know, they present a beautiful show for us every year. And you may want to pick up some and try to press them in a big book. Boys and girls, that reminds me, be sure and visit your public library sometime during this next week and check out some very good books on your very own library card at any of the Craven Pamlico Carteret Regional Library in the region. Check out some good books this week. And now stay tuned and we'll be back with another story in just a moment. And now, boys and girls, I'm going to read you the story, Mrs. Gray Squirrel and Tiger Cat. Burr, said Mrs. Gray Squirrel, as she put her head out of the door of her house in the old oak tree. Jack Frost was certainly here last night, and I suppose now he will be here every day. I must begin today and get my house cleaning done. She went into her house, called Mr. Gray Squirrel, and told the three little squirrels it was high time for them to be up and set about getting her breakfast. Of course, everyone in the squirrel family minded Mrs. Squirrel. So it wasn't long before Mr. Squirrel was ready for breakfast and the three little squirrels, with faces washed and fur smooth, were in their places at the table. Now, said Mrs. Gray Squirrel when they had finished, today I'm going to clean house. So you children go outdoors and don't dare bother me until dinner time. And you, Papa Squirrel, when you come home tonight, be sure to bring all the nuts you can carry. Winter will be here before we know it, and we want to be ready. Just as soon as the three little squirrels had helped put away the breakfast things, they ran out of the house to play in the trees, and Mrs. Squirrel went to work. Not one minute was wasted. Before noon, almost everything was in order, and Mrs. Squirrel sat down to rest a minute and catch her breath. Rap, rap, she suddenly heard. Well, that must be someone coming to call, said Mrs. Squirrel to herself, and I really haven't time to talk to anyone. I'm not going to answer the door. Rap, rap, rap. She heard again quickly, and then a rap, rap, a rap, rap. Now, who is that? I'll just peek. And very quietly, she climbed up to the little hall window and looked out. Then she saw who was there. Old Mrs. Gray Squirrel was so frightened that she almost fell over backward. For there, right on her doorstep, was Mr. Tiger Cat with his eyes big and cross-looking and his tail lashing back and forth. Oh, what shall I do, thought Mrs. Gray Squirrel. He will come in here and eat me up and then wait for the three little squirrels. Oh, I'll have to hide. So she crept softly downstairs, slipped into the deepest closet under the summer coats that she had already put away. She was just in time, too, for old Mr. Tiger Cat tired of waiting, pushed open the door and walked right in. Aha, no one at home, said he. Well, I'll just shut this door and lie down here. Then when the squirrel family comes in, I'll have a fine dinner. I'm a smart cat, I am. Well, Mrs. Gray Squirrel could hear all that he said, and she peeped out from her hiding place and saw him by the door. Oh, I can't fight, old Tiger Cat, she thought, 
for he's too big. I can't push him out of the door, for he'd see me and catch me, and I haven't a thing to hit him with. Oh, dear, what shall I do? And then she thought of something. I know what I'll do. I'll take Father Squirrel's gray summer coat. It's the only thing I haven't put away yet, and it's right here. I'll put it over old Tiger Cat's head. She took the soft gray coat down from the hook, opened the door without the least sound, and crept up in the back of Tiger Cat. Before he could blink his yellow eyes, she threw the gray coat over his head and tied the arms together. Well, now, if you could have seen old Tiger Cat, he did not know what had happened to him. He jumped up and he danced around and he meowed, but he couldn't get the little gray coat off. Now, Mrs. Squirrel was hopping around too, and just as soon as she could get near the door, she opened it. And just as soon as old Tiger Cat was near the door, she gave a great big hard push. Down, down, down he went to the ground. There, said Mrs. Squirrel happily, he's gone and my babies are safe. Now old Tiger Cat struck the ground with a hard bump, but he didn't care about that bump. He was so glad to be down on the ground again. The little gray coat had slipped off on the way down and caught on a branch of the tree, so he never did know what had been over his eyes. And he never tried to find out, for old Tiger Cat stayed away from the old oak tree and the squirrel house ever after that. And that is the, the story of Mrs. Gray Squirrel and old Tiger Cat. And now, boys and girls, I'm going to be back in just a moment with another story just for you. And now, boys and girls, I'm going to read you the story, Stone Soup. A young man was walking. He walked and he walked. He walked all night and he walked all day. He was tired. He was very hungry. At last he came to a big house. Oh, what a fine house, he said. There will be plenty of food there for me. And he knocked on the door. A little old lady opened it. Good lady, said the young man, I am very hungry. Can you give me something to eat? Oh, I have nothing to give you, said the little old lady. I have nothing in the house. I have nothing in the garden. And she began to close the door. Stop, said the young man. If you will not give me something to eat, will you give me a stone? <coughs> a stone, said the little old lady. What will you do with a stone? You cannot eat a stone. Ah, oh, said the young man, I can make soup from a stone. Now the little old lady had never heard of that. Make soup from a stone? Fancy that. There are stones in the road, said the little old lady. The young man picked up a round gray stone. This stone will make a wonderful soup, he said. Now get me a pot. The little old lady got a pot, filled the pot with water, and put it on the fire, said the young man. The little old lady did as she was told. As soon as the water was bubbling in the pot, the little old man put the round gray stone into the pot. Now we will wait for the stone to cook into soup, he said. The pot bubbled and bubbled. After a while, the little old lady said, this soup is cooking fast. It is cooking fast now, said the hungry young old man. Young man, it will cook faster with some onions. So the little old lady went to the garden to get some yellow onions. Into the pot, the yellow onions with the, with the round gray stone. 
soup from a stone, said the little old lady. Just fancy that. The pot bubbled and bubbled. And after a while, the little old lady said, oh, this soup smells good. Oh, it smells good now, said the hungry young man, but it would smell better with some carrots. So the little old lady went out to the garden and pulled up all the carrots she could carry. Into the pot went the long, thin carrots with the yellow onions and the round gray stone. Soup from a stone, said the little old lady. Just fancy that. The pot bubbled and bubbled. After a while, the little old lady said, Oh, this soup tastes good. Oh, it tastes good now, said the hungry young man, but it would taste even better with beef bones. So the little old lady went to get some juicy beef bones. Into the pot went the juicy beef bones and the long, thin carrots and the yellow onions and the round gray stone. Soup from a stone, said the little old lady. Just fancy that. The pot bubbled and bubbled. After a while, the little old lady said, this soup is fit for a prince. It is fit for a prince now, said the hungry young man, but it would be fit for a king with a bit of pepper and a handful of salt. So the little old lady got the pepper and the salt. Into the pot went the bit of pepper and the handful of salt with the juicy beef bones and the long thin carrots and the yellow onions and the round gray stone. Soup from a stone, said the little old lady. Just fancy that. The pop bubbled and bubbled. After a while, the little old lady said, this soup is too thin. It's too thin now, said the hungry young man, but it would be nice and thick with some butter and barley. So the little old lady went to the butter and barley and into the pot went the butter and barley with the bit of pepper and the handful of salt and the juicy beef bones and the long thin carrots and the yellow onions and the round gray stone. Soup from a stone, said the little old lady, just fancy that. The pot bubbled and bubbled. After a while, the little old lady tasted the soup again. That is good soup, she said. Yes, said the hungry young man. The soup is fit for a king. Now we can eat it. Stop, said the little old lady. The soup is indeed fit for a king. Now I will set a table fit for a king. So she took out her best tablecloth and her best dishes. Then the little old lady and the hungry young man ate all the soup. The soup made with butter and barley and the bit of pepper and the handful of salt and the juicy beef bones and the long thin carrots and the yellow onions and the round gray stone. Soup from a stone, said the little old lady. Fancy that. Now I must be on my way, said the young man. And he took the stone out of the pot and put it into his pocket. Well, why are you taking the stone, said the little old lady. Well, said the young man, the stone is not cooked enough yet. I will have to cook it some more tomorrow. And the young man said goodbye. And that is the story of stone soup. Let me remind you, boys and girls, that on your Christmas list, be sure and add some books because you know a book is a present that you can open again and again. And so now, boys and girls, we do close our stories for this morning, but we'll be back next Saturday morning with more stories for then. Till then, this is Eleanor Hawkins saying bye-bye for Tell Story Time. <laughs>